Nine laps to go. And now those other two drivers, Kurt Busch and Scott Rimmer, fading off Tony Stewart's back bumper. That's not good news for no. fans of the orange car. Because unless the handling bobbles on that eight car, one car by itself, the 20, is just not going to be able to pull around and pass him here at Daytona. I don't think so. Not Dale Denard Jr. Bill. Yeah, you guys are just talking about the past history here at this track. Tony looking the outside, Junior wants the inside. It was 56 years ago today on Daytona's famous beach course that NASCAR ran its first sanctioned race. Also on February 15th, David Pearson won the 500. That was in 76. The King won it on February 15th in 81. And Bill Elliott won from the pole in 1987. But Alan, as you were talking about, many fans will tell you the greatest moment in NASCAR racing came more recently than that. When the late Dale Earnhardt Sr. won his first and only Daytona 500 six years ago today, February 15, 1998. And uh, if you had the privilege of being here at Daytona that day, you'll never forget it. You saw what winning the Daytona 500 meant and the emotion that Dale Earnhardt showed in victory lane. It was like many had never seen him before. I think Stewart laid back. He laid back to get Kurt Busch to try to get a push by Junior. He knew he couldn't do it by himself. He tried to find someone to help him. And that's the smartest thing he could do. Exactly. If he just lays back and lets Kurt know he's going to lay back, he'll, heck of a, he'll get a heck of a run. A lot of drivers call this drafting thing a high-speed game of chess. Strategy, moves, knowing which moves to make and when. And that's why Earnhardt Jr. keep asking Skeevy for that information, because if he sees the 20 laying back, he needs to lay back a little bit. And his dad, Dale Earnhardt, was the greatest at that. He saw a car backing up, he would back up to them, so they couldn't get that run. Jr. might be doing the same thing. Tony Stewart, so optimistic all week long. After some early speed week troubles, they got that 20 cars handling dialed in on Thursday when they ran the qualifying races here that set the starting order for the 500. And since then, he's been very bubbly, got into the final practice crash yesterday, turned his week on a downside, but right from the start of this race, that 20 car has been fast. It got up in the early laps, drafted with Dale Earnhardt Jr. to the front, and these two drivers have dominated most of this Ooh. race. And Bush lit up the racetrack there. Got to run. You're all clear. Bob and Weave. See, that was a spotter on the back stretch that gave him that signal. Because Stevie Reeves from the front stretch really can't see that well coming off turn two. Five to go when they come to the start finish line. That's frustrating for the guys behind Junior and Junior is still He's so antsy right now. He wants this uh -huh. thing to be over. The 97's kind of drop back, so watch for him hanging back. And Tony's like, come on. He's waving. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Let's go. We need some help. What's he saying, Dave? Well, I, I can't confirm that strategy that you'd mentioned about falling back, but I can confirm that Tony on his own was doing everything that he could. He reeled in. He said, guys, that is all I've got. I'm giving all I can. That was when he was running alone. It's got to be frustrating for Stewart to track that eight car lap after lap, hoping it bobbles, hoping it bobbles. And so far, yeah. he just can't see it. Junior's not going to bobble. I mean, he just needs he, what he has to have is help. And he doesn't have those guys close enough to do it. And Junior, on the other hand, he's going, yeah, get that 97 out of that pack. He wants to see that car as far back from the 20 as possible, Tony Stewart, because he knows that 97 of Kurt Busch is not on the tail of Tony Stewart. Tony can't do anything with him. The teams have done all they can for their driver now, barring a caution flag, and even if a caution flag, these guys aren't coming to pit road. It's all up to the man behind the wheel. There are the Uries. Tony Uri Sr. on the left, Tony Uri Jr. on the right. Tony Uri Sr. working with Dale Earnhardt for so many years. And there's Joe Gibbs watching his driver, Tony Stewart. Try to earn the Joe Gibbs Racing Organization a second Daytona 500 trophy. When Dale Earnhardt's Dale children back to him a little bit. wanted to go racing, that was Dale Jr., Kerry, and Kelly, the daughter. He turned them over to Tony Uri Sr. I said, okay, here you go. Here's my kids. Take them racing. See which one has some talent. And obviously, he has proven, <laughs> Dale Jr. has proven to have some great talent. Kurt Busch, Scott Wimmer, and the lap car of Kyle Petty. 
And that's not to say that Kerry doesn't have talent as well. Junior has certainly demonstrated himself to yeah. be a top-notch driver. Yes, he has. And he's trying to win NASCAR Racing's biggest prize, the Daytona 500. He'll be five miles away when he comes to the start-finish line this time. Afternoon sun beginning to cast long shadows over the Daytona International Speedway. And now just two laps remaining in this race. Stewart just can't get to him. Kurt Busch dropped back about three or four car lengths there. No help to the 20 car of Tony Stewart. But remember, we think back to what happened to Bill Elliott at Homestead. Last Dale month. Earnhardt Sr. here. And, and his father in 1990 with on the last lap right about, about right there. there. Yeah. Is that a tire? Or? You're perfect. Not a problem at all. We've been stopping short for him all the day. And lost the race. <laughs> He asked me about fuel, and Tony Urey said, you're perfect. We've been stopping early because Tony Stewart had a problem with fuel. Fans come to their feet as Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Tony Stewart take the white flag. We're in the final lap of the Daytona 500. Jr. took the lead from Tony Stewart with 19 laps to go after he trailed Stewart's orange Chevrolet for much of the central part of the race. Now he's got to hang on for three quarters of a lap to earn a victory in the sport's biggest event. Stewart not close enough to make a move yet. It's all going to come down to whether Earnhardt has a bobble or a problem in this final third of a lap. Yeah, you can't get emotional yet because you've got to get off turn four and back to the start-finish line. And you can see it now. The legacy continues. Dale Earnhardt Jr. wins the 46th Daytona 500. Got it. Great run for Wimmer, too. Fantastic. Tony Stewart, second. Scott Wimmer, third. Kevin Harvick, fourth. And Jimmy Johnson, fifth. For Dale Earnhardt Jr., his first victory in the 500 in his fifth try. Well, there are some happy, happy, happy people. But none no happier than him. Oh, that's right. You can't overstate the months of preparation that go into running this one race. These teams take these cars to the wind tunnel, various engineering rigs like chassis dynamometers and seven post rigs to test them, get them all dialed together for this one shot at getting their names inscribed on the Harley Earl Trophy. And it's Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s who will be inscribed as the 2004 winner. Matt? A hug from Danny Earnhardt. Tony Yuri Sr., it's the Daytona 500. This track is so meaningful for you and the Earnhardts. What does this mean to win it, finally? Phew. I know what uh, Big E went through all them years trying to win this race. Phew. We just won the Super Bowl of this, this NASCAR racing, and uh, you don't believe how hard we worked to get here. we got to thank John Andretti, Slugger, Michael Walter. Uh, everybody. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Tony, he is like your other son. This has to be special for you to help him win this dream. Yeah. These two kids I got here, Dale Jr. and Tony Jr., uh, they both worked their guts out for this race team. We worked uh, 14 hours a day, seven days a week for the last month and a half to get here. Trying to build a car better than this car. We didn't think this car was going to be good enough to win this year. We just couldn't do it, so we rubbed on this one the week before we came. Worked the body shop to death and the fab shop to death and Wayne, Mickey, and AJ and Bruce and everybody else there. And uh, they did it, man. You guys back home, we did it.